The Japanese pavilion is one of contrast. On one hand is the country's emergence as an industrial power. The displays of the modern equipment of today are striking. A fine example is this model of the world's largest tanker, the Nisho Miro, 132,000 tons. The contrast is provided, for example, by the Aikenobo University for Art of Flower Arrangement, called by many Aikabana. But according to a folder distributed by the university, Aikabana is not merely a decoration, but has a deep view of life or philosophy of the Japanese people in its figure. It has historically and traditionally developed since it was born 500 years ago. You cannot understand the meaning of Aikabana when you physically look at the formation, the combination, or the beauty of Aikabana. You have to understand what Aikabena metaphysically has. This wood is a teak wood, and we put the five times lock, and uh, it is all inlay of uh, mother of pearl wall mm -hmm. by hand done. Handmade. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, is it a family work or is it factory work? Factory or? work. Factory yes, work, but all by hand. Uh -huh. Little boy to grown up people. Little boy to grown up yes. people. How how long would the course of this large table here with the uh, swans, I guess, in the center. But how long would it take to make a table like this, would you know? This uh, depends on people. So uh -huh. A lot of people doing is, uh, not so many uh -huh. days. So not so many know. days, huh? How much is a table like this worth? This cost is $800. $800. And how about the cabinet here? It's fine. About $800. Yeah. Fine. Thank you very much. The cultural heritage of Indonesia, a nation of more than 3,000 islands and many diverse people, is displayed in a graceful pavilion designed by R. M. Sudarsono, architect of the Palace of State on Bali. Inside, various aspects of life on the major islands of Bali, Java, and Sumatra are shown. On the floor are not treasure chests, but if you look closely, you will see that they are musical instruments. This ornate roof was built in Thailand, then shipped to the United States piece by piece for Thailand's exhibit. The building is an exact replica of the Mandap Saraburi, a shrine north of Bangkok. Inside, exhibits reflect the arts, crafts, and traditions of ancient Siam, such as this exquisite statuary and modern Thailand. Hong Kong is a building of bazaars in a setting recreating a dockside street in the British Connolly. To the right is the Crown Connolly Club, a restaurant and nightclub entered through the stern of a junk. The red and gold palace of nationalist China is full of rare and beautiful objects of art, some of them up to 3,000 years old. They say pictures don't do the real article justice. That, in most cases, is true. But in the case of the fair, sometimes the number of things around you to see creates such a hodgepodge that you miss the meaning of what you are looking at. 
I didn't realize until I got this slide back that I had been taking the picture of a rather king-sized Philippine hat. First of all, we have 12 panels, uh -huh. all about Philippine history. And the panels were made by Mr. Juan Padul with around 30 youngsters helping him, teenagers. And it takes about a month to finish one side of the panel. About a month to finish one mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. It's all done by a hand It's carving. all hand carved. And it's made of acacia wood. According to the artist, he chose this kind of wood because he said he can with, it can withstand the weather. No, it's not one big tree. It has been cut into sections and put together. All the 12 panels, though, were finished in seven months. And it tells about the history of the Philippines from the very beginning up to the present time. No, this is not a beer hall at the Philippine Pavilion. A place was needed for the extra concessions of various manufacturers of the world, of which this delicious Philippine beer is one. So the International Plaza came into being. Here we have a sort of international bazaar where just about anything unusual can be bought. Twenty-four countries are represented here, some with pavilions elsewhere on the fairgrounds, and some countries having their only fair representation here. And here we are again at the Unisphere, the symbol of the New York World's Fair. We have visited the five areas of the square mile of this fabulous wonderland, and there is no question that the fair is a place where you can have fun. For there is so much to see and do that no matter what your taste, you will find it here. But what about the theme of the fair, peace through understanding? Maybe the answer can be seen here. No, not so much in the Unisphere, which, even in all its glory, is only a symbol of our shrinking world. But the people, people from New York, from Amsterdam, from New Delhi, from a hundred thousand places in this shrinking world. These people came from all these places and found much to wonder at the complexities of an ever-changing world. A world where so many different ways of life and living are shown. A world of science on the threshold of a leap into other worlds through outer space. It is a world so diverse it is impossible to understand. Or is it? For we who visit this fair of the Unisphere find it is still a world populated by people. Behind all these complexities of ways of life and science, there is a common bond of all people, beautifully symbolized here by the love of a mother for her newborn child. The Unisphere at night is a thing of sparkling beauty, each pinpoint of light denoting another capital of the world, our good solid earth as it would be seen from thousands of miles in space. Yet in the limitless expanse of space, only a grain of sand, which, through nothing more than a misunderstanding, could be here today, gone tomorrow. But that tomorrow will never come with the lasting achievement of what is the theme of this fair of the Unisphere, peace through understanding. <laughs>